Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion on bias variance trade-off. Now we are going to contextualize that in K and N's and understand how the value of K that we choose is connected to the bias and variance. And to simplify this, we are going to consider two groups of K values. One we are going to call small K value and one we're going to call a large k value and normally something less than five would be small and greater than that would be a large value of k so let's for the sake of this discussion we are going to assume a blue curve which is the real data so the real data follows the blue curve and we are going to collect data samples which have some noise and some inaccuracies and hence those are recorded in these red dots so we're going to use this graph to understand the value of k associated with different bias and variance and oftentimes when I pose this question in class, whether a large value of K corresponds to a more complex model, I get the answer yes. Somehow intuitively we think that if the value of K is higher, it becomes more complex. We'll see that in K and N's, it's actually different. You see here that small value of K has a low bias and a high variance which is associated generally with more complex models right and a large value of k on the other hand has a higher value of bias and a low variance which is usually associated with simpler models now let's look at this example here to understand how this this is true so let's first consider a small value of k let's say k is equal to 1 the smallest value of k there is and when k is equal to 1 we are going to calculate the bias first so the bias is the distance between the data point and the curve right for each data point we only then consider that particular data point and its distance from the actual data curve which corresponds to the real data so here we have this data point and this to be our bias now we can see that we are only considering one data point and its distance to the curve so other data points are not contributing to this calculating calculation of bias for this data point and we can see overall that there are many points that are near the curve i'm going to just circle them so we understand this is near the curve these are all quite near near the curve right so these are all going to get a low bias right and we can see that they are the majority in this data sample and hence we can see that we this is also quite close right so we can see that the overall bias would essentially be low because it is going to be the average of the bias of these individual data points and since many of them are near the curve the overall bias would be would be low so a small value of k we can see that it can get a low bias now let's consider another example where we have another data point here and again we calculate the bias as the distance between the data point and the curve 
and again in this another data sample that we have generated we can again see there are many data points that are quite close to the curve and since we're going to use their individual distance from the curve and their the other data points which are far away their contribution to the bias the, the overall bias of all the data points is going to be minimized because there are many data points that are close to the curve so this for example this data point its contribution it's a little far away right its contribution to the bias is minimized because there are many other data points which are closer now let's look at what happens when we choose a large value of k let's say k is equal to 8 now when k is equal to 8 we are going to pick all pick a group of 8 points as a unit and we are going to compute their combined distance away from the curve and now there could be points here which are away way away from the curve than others which are closer but for the ones that are closer still these away points that are away would be contributing to the total bias calculation because we are choosing eight at a time so now for all these eight we can now mark which ones are quite away from the curve maybe even this one right and now we have a, a combined distance of all these data points from the curve calculated and we can just visibly see that their combined distance is higher because we are choosing a mix of data points and some could be nearer some could be farther and these farther away points are also included in multiple calculations so we are going to slide this right for different groups of eight points we are going to calculate this by sliding this this green dotted line box and when we keep sliding it it's possible that the points farther away contribute to multiple calculations and hence the overall bias becomes higher now we take another example just to understand this large value of k where we had the other data set right which we did for small k we are going to do this uh, the same thing again for large k we again see that the value is much higher for large value of k a combined distance of all these points from from the curve but another thing to notice is that the difference between this value let's let's call it let's call it 2 and the other value we just computed for the other data set let's call it 1 we can see that they don't vary too much because there are some points that are farther away there are some points that are closer and it's going to iron out so the average distance of all these eight points from the curve is going to have a more smoothened effect and therefore have a low variance from one data set to another so we have two data sets here and we are going eight at a time taking 8 into time into consideration and we can see that they balance the points closer to the curve balance out the points farther away from the curve and hence the average values of distance intuitively we can see that they will look similar now the same variance when we go back to the small value of k we can see that this potentially would have a higher variance than a large value of k because for example for all the yellow circles it's quite close to the curve 
but what about what about this one and this one maybe this one now these are quite higher so the variation in the value will be higher and hence that's what we call a high variance right and that happens when you have a small value of k because the difference between the biases would be high and therefore the model would have a high variance now choosing k in practice there is no magic k number that we can readily use for all data sets for each data set we have uniquely understand the requirements and the level of complexity that we need uh, we use cross validation we have used that for tuning parameters in neural networks in svms and we uh, can use the same trick here break the data into train validation and test and then use the validation data set to understand what value of k could possibly work better on the test data set so to do that for each point in the validation data set predict using the k nearest neighbors from the training set measure the error rate or the squared error try different values of k and use the one that minimizes the error on the validation data set and after we have completed all this and chosen a value of k then we proceed to use it on the test data set remember we don't use the test data set to tune our models we use the validation data set and test data set is put away until we are ready to go and only we use it at test time and this is another terminology that goes with KNN, the curse of dimensionality. We already saw that KNNs are not that effective when we have many, lots of dim dimensions. So the curse of dimensionality refers to the phenomenon that occurs in high dimensional data, which for which KNNs is really not suitable. And that's why that not suitability of KNNs to high dimensions is often refers referred to as curse of dimensionality because we like high dimensional data generally we like more features if the data has many features many attributes that we would like to model that is good because we have additional data additional information is always good but it can hurt our performance when we are using KNNs. Data in higher dimensions are much sparser. They are way sparser than you would like them to be and the, num the nearest neighbor would often be really away in high dimensional data. So the nearest neighbor can be a lot of distance away and it's not clear if that neighbor is really near and if that distance actually makes sense and uh, we should consider that data point for making the classification and that's why when we have higher and higher dimensions we get sparser and sparser spaces where the concept of nearness the concept of proximity vanishes all data points are definitely further apart in higher dimensions and it's hard to say whether they are you should consider the nearest neighbor to make the classification and if that would make sense so for knns that means that there are less points that are very close in the feature space and that's why we can't effectively use knns when we have high dimensions and this is often referred to as the curse of dimensionality where we have more additional information which could help our model but it's not because the model in question is KNNs.